Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at using enums in Ruby on Rails. This is going to be a beginner focused tutorial. We are going to cover some helper methods that aren't really talked about a lot. So if that's something you're into, uh, maybe the scopes that we cover, that'll be worth sticking around for. But overall, this should only take about eight to 10 minutes. To get started, we're going to go ahead and create a new Rails app. We'll say Rails new video and just go ahead and run that. Uh, now I haven't really put a lot of thought into this, so we're going to need a model that we can add the enum to. So let's maybe do um let's just do posts we'll add posts and we'll say uh on the post we'll do like a status enum for published or archived i guess let's let's go with that so uh what we can do is we can say rails g scaffold post title and body of type text and i'm going to hit enter here we'll generate the migration for the enum separately in case you have an existing model you want to add this to so you don't have to do that Otherwise, you just add the uh, the field uh, in the in the Rails G scaffold part if you want to. So let's do a Rails G migration. Say add enum to post, and the enum is going to be actually this should be add status. I have enums on the brain. Add status to post, and this will be status colon, and it's going to be of type integer. So we can go ahead and run that. And now let's go ahead and open this up in VS Code. So we can come over here to our explorer, our DB and our migrate and our add status migration. We can see in here that we have this integer uh, and we can default it if we'd like to. If you ever want to default an integer, you can just do a comma default colon and then whatever value you want it to default to. In our case, it doesn't really matter, but uh, I guess we can go ahead and run it like that. Next, let's come into our app, our controllers and our post controller and inside of our, uh, maybe in our index, I just want to type the word console and hit control S. This will allow us to do some debugging without needing to refresh. Uh, let me hit F11 again. Now let's do a Rails S to start our server. Come over to localhost port 3000. We have to run our pending migrations. And now let's come into our config and our routes.rb. And then in our routes.rb, we can do a route to the post con oops, post controller index action. And if you're wondering, I just click the run pending migrations button there. When we get that error, they let you run it straight from the browser. So here we can see we have this like console thing here, and this just allows us to do stuff like post.count. And we can run all of our Rails commands here without needing to like error out the page or anything. So we'll click new post. We'll say this has a test title and a case body. We'll hit create post. And now we'll go back to post. And here we can say something like app post equals post dot first. And then we can see that the status here is defaulted to zero. So let's go ahead and let's add this enum. So to add an enum, we have to come into our models and our post.rb. And then inside of our post is where we just declare it. So the actual command here is pretty straightforward. We just say enum space colon and then the name of our enum. And we want this to match the field we added. So we want this to be the same as this status right here. And then after the status, we can then either pass in an array. So we'll say maybe like this has, um, I don't know, like a draft. Oh, thank you, GitHub Copilot. A draft, a published, or an archived. Now, the, the thing about this is because the enum is going to map everything, we're going to have like uh, status is mapped to these integers, right? Uh, oops. Uh, so we can come down here. Oh, right there. Uh, our draft is going to be zero. Our published is going to be one. And our archived is two. So if we change the enum when the, um, when the database has data already, the, uh, the integers will not change with it. So what this means is we have, uh, like let's say we set a post.first, which has a, st a status uh, uh, equal to zero, right? And then we say, all right, now, um, the draft is actually the second option, right? So we take this enum right here. I'll go ahead and comment this out. We come down here and we change this to be like uh, published first and then draft and then this. And you can see our post.first is still going to be uh, the zeroth option, which is going to return published instead of draft now. So if you were to change it like that, you would also have to update all of your, your models to make sure this works. Now there is a better way to do this. So we can actually just get rid of this. And up here, we can say this is an enum of status and it takes in a hash instead, just like GitHub Copilot was suggesting. So here we can set the draft to be zero, the published to be one, and the archive to be two. 
So now if we change the status, um, the the integers won't you know ruin everything because uh, we can still you know change this order. Maybe we want to alphabetize this. We grab archived, we come over here, we say archived is first, then draft, then published. Uh, we're still we're still set here, right? Like we're not worrying about this now being uh, the zero, the first, and the second. So that's just something to be aware of. And in terms of accessing the the uh, hash here, what we can do is we can just say, uh, well, I don't know. Let's let's just come in here. Let's save this, and then let's uh, let's refresh this page. And then we can do at post equals post dot first. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit. At post equals post dot first. And we can say at post dot status gives us back the draft. So maybe we want to say, uh, maybe we want to check if a post is, is uh, published, right? So we can say at post dot published question mark, and that'll return false. We can do at post dot draft. If we want to check if it's a draft and that'll return true. Now let's say we want to, uh, when we create a post, you know, it'll be uh, initialized to a draft, right? Uh, what if we come into, I don't know, some action and we want to just have like a, a button that forces the post to be set to uh, published. Now, generally the way we could do this is we could say like uh, at post equals post dot first, at post dot uh, status is equal to um, post dot statuses and then uh, let's say published right so at post dot status is now published okay and then we have to do a at post dot save so that will then fire the update and we're, we're good to go there alternatively let's say we want to change this back to a draft real quick we don't have to type all of this what we can actually do is we can just say at post dot draft and then an exclamation or a bang if we run that we can come down here and you can see that also updates it. So that's a really useful shorthand. It's obviously not going to be useful in every situation. Uh, like if you're, you know, creating a form that lets you change what your your uh, status is, you're probably not going to be able to just call at that draft. Uh, but if we were to, I mean, that might be a good thing to take a look at. If we want to come in here and maybe in our post, if we want to add a field to set this enum real quick, we can come into our views, our posts, and our form and then in here all we have to do is say uh you know something like um add a drop down to select the status right and come in here and then we can do a div tab it over do a oops do a form label for the status and then a form dot select for the status with the post dot statuses dot keys something like that save it refresh the page and now we can see if we click on this, we have draft, published, and archived. So let's uh, create a new one and let's publish it immediately. We'll say, uh, I don't know, a published post with words in the body. Click create post. And now that post has been created. So if we come back here, let's grab this second post. We'll say at post equals post dot second, which is our published post. But well, we can see here that our status is still set to draft. So our at post dot status is still returning draft. So why is that? Well, if we come down here, we have to scroll up a bit to find it, but hopefully we'll see some red text, which is our error. And it tells us we have an unpermitted parameter for the status. So to permit it, we have to come into our controllers or post controller, I'll hit F11, scroll down a bit. All the way at the bottom here, we just have to sanitize it and make sure we're allowing this parameter. And if you're wondering why we do these params.require, uh, I saw a funny Reddit post the other day where uh, someone had users sending a post request to the slash users uh, portion of their uh, their routing, uh, which allowed them to just post something with like a user ID of, of like a new user. Uh, and then they just set their admin Boolean there because the, all the params were just being added. They weren't, you know, permitting parameters. Uh, which allowed them to just, you know, um, conveniently create like, you know, super users in the application. But that's not really the point here. It's just that's why we use the the permitting and the, the requiring of parameters. So let's come over here now and let's try to uh, create a new post. I'll just uh, close this and we can say new post and we'll make this actually a published post with words. And let's set this to published and let me hit enter so we can see this. We'll hit create. Now, if I scroll up here, we should hopefully see 
we inserted into posts a title, a body created at, updated at, and a status. The status was submitted as a one, which is our uh, published. And now if we come back here, we can do at post equals post dot last, at post dot published question mark. And now you can see we have that post uh, set to published. So it's not terribly difficult to set this up, right? Like, uh, I mean, the hardest part here is probably knowing that you need to do, you know, posts.statuses.keys. Uh, but aside from that, I mean, it is a really useful option. Now, there are a couple other helper methods we can very quickly add here. Um, there is the option for a prefix or a suffix. This is just useful if uh, maybe you want to um, add in the uh, status as a prefix or a suffix. So let's say you had a, a um, I don't know, something where it, it's not clear enough that it's a status. Uh, what we can do is we can come into our post. We can say, let's give this a comma. And we can add a uh, suffix as true. Save this. And I think that's how you do it. Now, if we come over here and we refresh, uh, it might need to be a underscore suffix, maybe. Underscore suffix, save that. And then refresh, there we go. So now if we do a uh, at post equals post dot first, we can then do a uh, at post dot uh, draft underscore status question mark. So now it's a little bit more clear that we're not just calling the draft, we're saying this is a draft status. And of course, this is also gonna work for our published, uh, published status, question mark. Um, and the other thing we can do is change this to a prefix, and you can already imagine what that's gonna do. It's just gonna allow us to, uh, to have the status at the beginning. So now we can say uh, at post equals post dot last, at post dot uh, status underscore draft question mark, and there you go. So, you know, hopefully this was helpful. I know it's a bit of a, a, a casual episode, I guess, but it was just something that I thought should be covered because there's plenty of uses for enums. And if you set them up as a hash and, you know, you know that some of these options exist, uh, it's actually very easy to do stuff like create those forms. Uh, it's just a couple of steps. So yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful. And hopefully I will see you in the next video.